even today, as the US dollar pushes the peso to almost 60, and that's just as of filming, a million Philippine pesos is still a million Philippine pesos to more than just a million Filipinos. And when you're buying a car, the difference of staying under budget and stretching it by just a bit could spell the difference of rent and utilities, a vacation that you so richly deserve, or even tuition. Now, underneath Toyota's huge umbrella of not just models, but prices as well, is this car, something that has been making waves ever since it was introduced earlier this year. This is the Toyota Race. Now, what we have here on the right is the Toyota Race Turbo Variant, the top-of-the-line model. On my left is the top-of-the-line and naturally aspirated model, the G. So today we're going to show you the similarities and of course the differences between them and tell you that there is a still firm 125,000 Philippine peso difference between the two. And we're going to try to figure out if you do indeed need the turbo or if you'd be happy with the naturally aspirated engine. We're going to show you exactly where the 125 goes and really if you need it. So basically, should you take the blue pill or the red pill? Sorry, budget constraints and copyright infringements. And plus, this time, at least you don't get all the holes in your body and the pink goo. Blah. So the main topic of conversation is trying to figure out exactly where that 125,000 Philippine pesos is going. And if you're thinking on the exterior, eh, not so much, but I will take you through some changes on the exterior between the turbo and the top of the line naturally aspirated. Let's start with the front clip. They both have uh, LED headlamps and halogen fog lamps found down below. They also both have LED uh, DRLs found on either side. The difference between the two of them is, well, it's kind of hard to tell, but it's actually technology in the form of sensors, parking sensors found on the turbo. On the naturally aspirated, you only have parking sensors found at the rear. So that is the big difference. Everything else is actually exactly the same from the grill to the badge and whatnot. When you move down the side, well, there is also some differences, but it can get kind of silly. Uh, in, in, I'll explain. Uh, the, the, the shape of the car is exactly the same. The features on the car is exactly the same. You've got chrome on the handle and you've got repeaters on the side mirror. But the difference is, obviously, on the naturally aspirated, you've got a badge that says VVTi. And on the turbo, you have, well, yeah, turbo. The one that's really easy to spot are the wheels. The wheels on the naturally aspirated are 16s in this particular pattern. Whereas in the turbo, they're actually 17s of a different pattern. A bit more, well, sophisticated, really. If we go to the sides also, there is a blacked out roof that can be found on both models. Mind you, this obviously is also the top of the line of the naturally aspirated. Uh, I wanted to also mention one thing, it's not really part of their view, but I noticed that they have shark's fins antennas, which I'm actually very glad that they do. Because I recently noticed that all the Vios cars out there, and you've seen them on the road, right? Their rubber ducky antenna tends to like bend with time and the sun and the wind. And it kind of reminds you of a caged killer whale where the dorsal fin kind of folds over. And this just basically looks so much better. So thank you, Toyota, if you're listening, for taking out the dorsal fin and putting, I guess, a shark's fin? Yeah, I guess. Now, onto the rear. Now, at the back, it's exactly the same with one another. They both have uh, LED tail lights, which unfortunately are no longer sequential turn signals. I wish it kind of continued, but hey, at least you have them up front. Uh, the body cladding is exactly the same. The cuts are the same. So is the ground clearance too, by the way. I forgot to mention that. It's both 200 millimeters. When you open it up, you get the exact same amount of space behind the second row, which is 369 liters. However difficult it is to impart 369 nine liters will show you now bullock buy in boxes and how many they can fit and obviously that 369 liters will double when you fold the second row now the change that takes up 
I would say the bulk of that 125,000 Philippine pesos is not actually and obviously seen on the automobiles, but is what's underneath. Hey, how do you open this thing? Oh, there you go. Underneath, there are some differences too, and well, obviously similarities. The similarities would be the transmission and the number of cylinders. Both engines have three cylinders and both engines are also mated to CVTs. But that's where the similarities stop because the engine on the turbo is a one liter. The engine in the naturally aspirated is a 1.2. Oh, well, completely unrelated, but the only other three cylinder turbocharged gasoline engine under Toyota's umbrella, it's actually the GR Yaris. We had so much fun with that car. If you'd like to see the video, I'm sure that the link is somewhere up here or in the description down below. Now, the turbo, the power that it produces, well, it produces about 96 horses and 140 newton meters of torque. In the naturally aspirated, you've got only 86 horses and 113 newton meters of torque. Now, all that mumbo jumbo translates to obviously fuel efficiency, and those numbers are, and this is real world, mind you, the turbo can roughly do about 22 kilometers per liter on the highway. The naturally aspirated, get this, can do 24 kilometers per liter on the highway. Now, when we took it into the city, and you guys know how hellish the traffic can be, the turbo was able to produce 10 kilometers per liter. Decent. The naturally aspirated, that can do 12. The second row of both cars will offer the same amenities and space, exactly the same, which is to say that uh, you've got good leg room and headroom actually, even taller passengers like Jack, if they were to sit here in the back behind my normal driving position, he wouldn't actually have issues with the amount of space because like I said, the leg room is good, the headroom is actually pretty darn good. Toys, well, there aren't much, but I will show you some, like the bottle holders on either door. There are, but it can only hold smaller bottles. Uh, there is no center armrest and no uh, charging points or air vents found up front. And this is exactly the same with the turbo and the naturally aspirated. The big difference is, the one difference is the seat material. Here in the turbo, you've got cloth and leather at the same time. Uh, up front, you'll find some white stitching on the cloth and on the leather as well. In the naturally aspirated, it's not stitching, but rather key colored uh, piping. When I say key colored, it actually means that whatever color the automobile is, the piping on the on the chairs will actually be the same thing. But space, like I said, is exactly the same. Now, now back to the, the, the difference in seat material. The leather isn't obviously going to be the greatest of leather. It's more like pleather, really. And I, for one, think that maybe the funds for that would have been better appropriated in getting us uh, some air vents or some charging points in the back because, well, in today's society, those are actually very, very important. If not the air vents, then definitely the charging points. But everything else is really the same. Uh, the, do the, the cards, or not, not the cards, but rather the door panels are, are scratchy plastics and obviously very easy to clean. And again, I can't stress this enough. The amount of headroom is just, it's pretty tall for such a tiny car. How'd they do this? Oh, and also there's more safety for the passengers here in the turbo than there is in the naturally aspirated because here you've got curtain airbags and side airbags as well, even for the rear passengers. Whereas for the naturally aspirated, you only have dual front airbags. Now, while both automobiles definitely have pros for them, similar ones, they also have pros or rather cons that are similar as well. And I'll walk you through it. Number one would be the doors in the back are obviously scratchy plastics, right? Easy to clean, but that also means that the dashboard is also the same material. Easy to clean, but I could use a little bit more touch, a little bit more sophistication, which you do have naman here in the center uh, near the gear shifter, that's nice. Another con against it is it might take you some time to get into the proper driving position because while the steering wheel does move up and down, it's not telescopic. This is for, for all models. And so it might take some time to get you into the proper driving position. And then when you are in the proper diving position, you'll notice that your left foot doesn't actually have a rest uh, like most automobiles should. So it's not a deal breaker per se, but it is just something that I noticed. Now, let's go through some of the uh, similarities between both cars, which is they both have touchscreen infotainment systems with Apple CarPlay and Android capabilities. They both have a seven inch TFT display 
and they both have four wheels. No, I'm kidding. Now, the differences between the two are as follows. Inside the turbo, you have a nine inch infotainment screen uh, that doubles as your reverse camera. It had a reverse camera in that naturally aspirated as well, but that is actually not a nine inch, but a, eight inch. an eight inch screen. And it kind of looks a little bit more different because it kind of resembles more of a CRT. I'm too old that you'll, some people will understand that. Also, inside the turbo, there are paddle shifters. You can go to manual mode like you can here in the natural aspirated, but here there are paddle shifters. And then the differences in tech, obviously, is that here in this car, thanks to Toyota Safety Sense, in addition in this automobile, there are blind spot monitors, which you can use, obviously, when you're driving. Speaking of which, why don't we go to that portion now and see really what the main difference is or where that 125,000 Philippine pesos is going because it's definitely in the performance of the engine. But before we do, I'd implore you to please like and subscribe our channel because we're trying to hit a million subscribers by tomorrow. God, I wish. No, truthfully, just like and subscribe our channel because we love creating these videos just for you guys. A million subscribers. That's like half a million subscribers away. How are we going to do that in a day? We can't. Now, normally when we do our drives, it's just basically just me and Jack inside the automobile. But this time around, since I wanted to figure out exactly what the difference is in the engine, uh, talking about 125,000 Philippine pesos between the two cars, I thought it would be good to load up the race with the proper amount of people or weight in that sense. So just as a full disclaimer, I'm about a buck 40, Joey weighs about a buck 20, and Jack is about twice the size and weight of Joey. So essentially, we've got a full car going on. So we're gonna tell you how it feels like just normally on the road, and also, let's try it on a hill. On more flat roads such as this with a full complement, like I just mentioned, the 140 Newton meters of torque feels good inside a small engine albeit that this is obviously just a one liter compared to the 1.2 liter which is in the naturally aspirated the torque delivery is actually pretty good and the car is quite peppy now again mind you this is just on flat surfaces comparing it to other engines that we've driven of this size it's actually close to that of the Almera which by the way if you'd like to see a full review on the links are again somewhere up on top or in the description down below the steering feels actually quite light. I expected it actually to be even lighter as you would with smaller automobiles, but here it's light and yet it feels like you have a good relationship with the road. Uh, bumps and, well, smaller holes on the road is translated very nicely onto the steering wheel and it's not jarring at all. The ride quality is, well, the engines of these automobiles are not exactly the size of that of the Wego, but it's comparable because it's so small. But what I can tell you is that the ride quality inside the race is much better than that of the Wego, that's for sure. Uh, the one great test that I went through was being able to take uh, both the naturally aspirated and the turbo out on the highway. And I got to tell you, the difference uh, against the 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 Wego is night and day because the NVH is obviously much better inside this car because in this car it's not as if that you're screaming at one another trying to communicate uh, even a hi or a hello when you're traveling at 85 90 kilometers per hour so yeah much better inside this car driving position and visibility is quite good again what's getting me is the fact that there is no left foot peg and that's kind of catching me off guard because i expect to stretch my left foot everyone or left leg every once in a while but it actually is quite forgivable in this sense because well your field of vision is actually very good you're sitting a lot higher than you would let's say a, a hatchback the comparison that jack and i just did the, the review the links are somewhere up here or in the description down below so you're seated in a much higher position so you actually have a better view of the road but if we truly are to get into the nitty-gritty of what it feels like to drive this turbo against the naturally aspirated i think we got to go through the test that we really wanted to do from the very beginning which is um 
the hill test. We're gonna try and show you exactly how it feels like with a full complement of people and see if the engine has an easy time or a hard time bringing us up there. Now, the hill test obviously that we're gonna go through is not going to be going up to Baguio, but we are in the Tagaytay area. Uh, the road is quite steep in a sense and we'll try to show you the best that we can. And I'm interested to know actually which one makes less noise and more power. I would assume it'd be this, the turbo, right guys? Yeah, they're very talkative. I am really happy that you realize that Baguio isn't the only place with hills. Oh, but we will. I'm still not over it. No, but I really am not. This guy, this guy was with you. He was like, I want to go. I, I didn't want to. What is wrong with you in trying to travel the beautiful landscape of the Philippines? You... Beautiful landscape, you mean like four hours of highway? It's landscape. So, anyway. We are now going uphill, and off the bat, if I floor it, yes, most definitely there's a lot of noise that's coming out of the engine. But I don't feel as if that it's having too much of a hard time. I'm assuming because it's got 140 newton meters of torque, so it's got a lot of potential to do a good amount of work, not necessarily the fastest, but it can do good amount of work. I don't feel as if that the car is lagging, um, the steering wheel has gotten a bit heavier ever since I nailed the accelerator and now that we're getting steeper uh, the engine is starting to well not complain but be a lot more vocal there's obviously no gargling from the back here this is a twisty uphill part right here let's see what the engine does no complaints yes obviously you can hear the engine roar but really is it because of momentum, I wonder? What if, guys, just what if we were to stop on, the, on a hilly portion of the road and then do an acceleration from there? Three, two, one. Okay, that took a little bit of time, but it did eventually, the power band did eventually bite. Uh, the CVT felt like as if it was a little bit rubber bandish at the very beginning, but once I hit maybe about 15, 20 kilometers per hour, that's when the engine noise matched the amount of power that felt like it was being laid down on the road. So really, you, you, you can feel confident, even with this complement inside the automobile, that the car will make it through the hills. That was actually a pretty easy hill. Let's get to a a more intermediate hill. Oh my god, this is actually quite steep. This is, is this quite steep? Yes, okay, let's steep. try it again. Say one of people. Here we go. Three, two, one. Are you flooring it? I'm flooring it. Okay, this time around on a much steeper hill, uh, the the it still did feel very rubber bandish, the CVT and the power didn't feel like, or rather the, 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 the voice from the engine didn't match the power that was being laid down till I was hitting maybe about 45 kilometers per hour. So I guess the steeper the hill, obviously the noisier it's gonna get. Um, should we try one more? So we did a low hill. We did an intermediate incline. Shall we do a, like a really big incline, Jack? Joey, what do you guys think? Sure. One more? Yeah. I was, I was going to agree, but I think that was the, the most steep part. There is no, there's one oh, more. Oh, there's one. There is one more. Okay. This one's a really big hill. Here we go. Three, two, one. And then up a corner with a little bit of momentum. I think the momentum helped a lot, but yeah. I think Joey hit the nail on the head. How he described it when that when you floor it, especially when we were going uphill earlier, um, the engine feels like and sounds like a true three cylinder and behaves like it too outside of the power band. But once the turbo kicks in, then you're like, ah, okay, really that, that's probably where your money's worth is going to be able to produce that much torque to be able to move that many people up well pretty steep hills 
I'm interested now, however, if I save 125,000 Philippine pesos, which so far I think I can, excluding the engine, would I be happy? Shall we find out? Did, did you want us to, to answer? No, I just want you guys to keep, just okay. smile and look pretty. Now off the bat, when you jump into the naturally aspirated, the G variant, um, feels pretty much the same except the fact that, well, on a straight line, whether you're stuck in traffic or on the highway, it feels as if there's a bit more vibrations inside this automobile. You can feel it in the steering and uh, the ride itself. Uh, it could be because the, the engine is struggling just a little bit more than in the turbo because it does have less horses and less torque. Uh, but I don't feel as if that it should be uh, that much of a difference from the turbo, if I'm being honest. It, I felt as if that it would be much closer, but yet, no, you can't. Uh, there is definitely a driving feel difference. Naturally aspirated, going uphill with momentum. Oh, it's taking some while. It's a lot of noise. It took a while before the power felt like it was thrown down onto the road. Uh, I'm now a little bit worried about what it's gonna feel like on an incline. Even right now, traveling at 60 kilometers per hour, I can definitely feel, hear a lot more noise coming from the engine and my right foot actually on the accelerator pedal, pedal has a little bit more vibration to it. Ride quality is still pretty much the same though. First of three inclines, here we go. Floor it. Ooh, that's taking a bit more time than I would have liked. It finally, the, the, the torque finally felt as if that it really bit at about 40 kilometers per hour when the car started moving a little bit more. Momentum is, well, it's good for the automobile uh, because that really helps out. Every, in every which way possible because, well, there's not a lot of torque or horsepower in the automobile. But remember, these are not performance vehicles. These are vehicles just built for the city. We're just doing these tests to see just exactly how much they can take and what the difference is between the torque figures for the price of 125 grand. Okay, this one is the intermediate incline. Here we go in three, two, one. Oh, a lot of vibration there. A lot of vibration there, but you know, it's not as if that the car is rolling back or anything, and it's not as if that the car is looking for power. Like, it's, it's sure, it's gonna scream because it's a small engine, but it's not like, it's not like it's an improbable task to ask of the automobile. It's not. Third incline, steepest one, three, two, one. Yes, I'm definitely, I definitely feel like I'm pushing the car forward, like I want to help it. It's not moving very quickly. But what, I'm, what we've shown is that with a full complement uh, of, of, of weight, of, uh, if, not, if not a full complement of passengers, but a full complement of weight, the car is able to produce results. And the results are not they're not going to be stellar. Obviously, like I said, these cars are not exactly made for, for racing. It's not made for cornering. It's not made for attacking corners and whatnot. But for as, as, as transportation inside the city, and quite literally, if you feel like you need to do a little bit of a, a hill climb every now and then uh, to head to Tagaytay, then yeah, it's plenty capable. The big question now is, is the 125,000 Philippine pesos extra that you're paying for worth it? Hmm. I will not say that if you opt for the turbo race, that it is an unnecessary purchase because it's actually the better automobile. It's got better performance. It's got better tech and looks wise, although extremely similar, it does have a little bit of an edge and it's got uh, unique colors as well. However, that's not to say that the naturally aspirated race is also not a good car because it is. This is definitely the better car, but this, well, 
it can perform all the responsibilities and duties that you expect from the turbo in a package that's more affordable and mind you more fuel efficient as well how they do that i have no idea but in the case of naturally aspirated versus turbo and a price difference of 125,000 Philippine pesos, this, this would definitely be our choice. And to kick it back to the beginning, blue pill or red pill, well, it looks like Neo was right. <laughs>